If your idea of laid back motorcycling is to head to the nearest set of twisties on a Sunday morning, take a break, grab your cup of tea or coffee while admiring your motorcycles. Well, I do agree. Till now, under two lakh rupees, the best option for you was a Royal Enfield, the classic or the bullet or the new Meteor 350. However, a Royal Enfield is not everyone's cup of tea or cup of coffee. In fact, a lot of bikers will not want to live with a Royal Enfield. For such bikers, thankfully for laid-back motor motorcycling, there are now two options in the market: the Benelli Imperiale 400 and, of course, the new Honda, the CB 350 Highness. Now, this is not going to be a hardcore comparison between the Benelli offering over here and the Honda, but a proper discussion about these two new bikes in the same segment of retro classics. There are a lot of people out there in the market who want to get back into biking, 35 years old, 45 years, 50 years of age, and people who want ease of touring on a weekend like this. For them, these motorcycles are very, very sensible, very, very practical. Now, before we move further, guys, there are more videos around both the motorcycles in terms of the acceleration, the in-gear roll-ons, and of course, the sound from the engine and the exhaust. The the links to them are currently in the description section below. I really urge you to check those videos out after this video gets over. So, back to the both, uh, back to both the motorcycles. I will start with the pricing first. This one is 1.99 lakh rupees, extreme daily. Uh, Benedi Imperiale and the company is really focusing hard on getting customers. There are good offers going on, including discounts and special EMI schemes. We have an article around that, and the link to that is currently on the screen. Do check that article out to know how you can own a Benedi at a lower cost. Even the servicing parameter, again, Benedi has worked very hard in the last few months. When you say the word Benelli, immediately you have larger capacity motorcycles coming to your mind. But yes, Benelli wants to say that if you own the Imperiale, do not worry about the servicing cost. In fact, as an offer, there are some add-ons going on for a few years. You have RSA for a few years. You have servicing taken care of. Uh, do check that out uh, at a later stage. The link to that article is currently in the description section below. On the other hand, the Honda CB350 only to be sold via big wing, big wing dealerships. That could be a hampering thing in the starting stage. But yes, Honda is promising they're gonna update the network as the months come by. In terms of pricing, this one has a starting price of 1.85 lakh rupees, lower than that of the Benelli for the standard version, and the Deluxe is yours for 1.9 lakh rupees extra room daily. So yes, pricing not much to choose from, a difference of 10,000 rupees. But otherwise, the styling is what I really want to focus over here. The Benelli first, as you can see, this one has a pure all black theme to it. There is more chrome, for example, more chrome than the CB offering chrome around the indicators at the front and at the back. Otherwise, most of the bike is finished in black. This also has a more old school charm as compared to this one. This one more is of a retro classic with modern elements. But if you want something that is That takes you back to the 60s and the 50s, like the Bullet 350, the pure Bullet 350, not the classic. I think this one will gel in well with those kind of customers. Right from that tiny gravel at the back to your spit seats to the way the handlebar is, and even these old school pads around the tank over here. So I think, in my opinion, you want to live with an old school bike with spoke wheels. You can pick the Benelli. On the other hand, for the young enthusiast who wants easy motoring, who wants easy motorcycling, in fact, I had booked the motorcycle when the bike was launched. I went and bought the BMW. That is a different story altogether. But yes, I was so happy with this motorcycle. I had booked the motorcycle at day number one of the launch. It does take the CB legacy further. In the deluxe version, you can opt for this dual tone paint scheme, and of course, you have more darker elements. There is no chrome around the indicators at the front and the back, and like this. The rear uh, rest you see for the luggage is uh, not a not a standard fitment. It is an add-on uh, through our friends at Zana Motorcycles. Uh, they do manufacture a lot of parts for motorcycles. Uh, you can contact them for any kind of accessory or add-on part for your motorcycle, be it the Himalayan or the Benelli or the CB. So back to this. Yes, the overall fit and finish is something that Hondas are known for. I'm not saying this one is better or this one is less, but there are no elements that will make you feel out of place when you're spending so much on a motorcycle. Again, it's got a modern touch. You have alloy wheels, and of course, we have tubeless tires. This one has spoke wheels and no tubeless tires. So in the end, I would say if you really want to go into the 50s and 60s, pick this one up. Really looks nice for the price, but if you want something that's a bit more modern with a flashy two-tone two paint job, you know which showroom to walk into.
So on this Sunday morning motorcycling ride of yours, after your tea is over, what do you do? You get back to the ride and before you ride the motorcycles, a quick look at the engines. Now both the units have a single cylinder air cooled engine over here. There is no fancy uh, oil cooling or your liquid cooling on the motorcycles. This one is a 348cc bike and the Benelli has 25cc extra at 374cc. So yes, this one has a slight advantage in terms of the displacement. You we usually say there is no replacement for displacement and that is a true fact for a Benelli as well. In terms of your outright power, the same figures of 21 bhp on both the motorcycles. However, on the Honda, the max power of 21 comes at 500 rpm lower as compared to the Benelli and that should translate into a better ride in city commute but I'll talk about that at a later stage. In terms of torque, uh, I'm surprised the CB offers you 1 and of torque extra 30 as compared to 29 on the Benelli and again this 30 uh, NM of torque comes at 500 rpm less than the Benelli that should again translate into a better real world riding experience. Now the issue with the Benelli is that you have extra CC, it's a larger motor but this one is 24 kgs heavier. So yes, the power to weight ratio is better in the Honda offering as compared to the Benelli motorcycle. Also, both the bikes give you a 5 speed standard, a 5 speed gearbox as standard. I don't have any issues with the gear shift. This is slightly on the better side as compared to the Benelli but yeah, otherwise not a big issue so the big thing in terms of your actual riding how do the motorcycles fare well we'll start with a quick 0 to 100 run on both the bikes the Benelli and the CB followed by the in gear accelerations in the third and the fifth gear how do the bikes gather speed well let's have a look So that is about the acceleration of the motorcycles and the in-gear roll-on speeds. Moving on, the thump. Now this is something that when you say thump in a bike, we immediately have a memory of a Royal Enfield. But these bikes are not bad at all. The Honda CB350 has a lovely, lovely thump coming from the exhaust. The engine is smooth and silent but the exhaust is where you have the magic from a rider's perspective in, in traffic or going through an underpass. When you rev out, the kind of thump that comes to your ears is intoxicating. On the other hand, Benelli, the engine is uh, quite vocal. This one is smooth but the Benelli's engine is quite vocal. And the exhaust is not bad, it is actually good in a mature manner as compared to that one. So yeah, a lot of people out there in the market who choose the Benelli for its old world charm will actually like the exhaust that complements the styling of the motorcycle. But that can be more enjoyable for youngsters in my opinion. In traffic, uh, this is where I would really say that uh, I think uh, we don't have the gear issues but I think uh, the Honda's gearing is on the taller side. So in the fifth gear, it will not pull in easily at around 50, 60, but this one in the fifth gear will easily pull in from lower speeds. So that is a plus one for the Benelli. A plus for the Honda is that it is quicker than this motorcycle, especially at lower RPM, at lower revs. You want to close in on gaps in second, third gear. This one feels quicker. 
on the negative of the banale of the cv because the gearing is tall in the fifth gear while you can cruise easily at 100 kmph if you want to overtake someone at 100 you have to downshift in the fifth fourth gear because the fifth actually feels more like a over drive gear for me over ride gear for me in the cv but in this one if you're on 100 in the fifth gear in the banale it still has spoke you can easily overtake from 100 to 120 you don't you do not have to downshift to the fourth gear on the plus sign for the CV, because the gearing is tall on open roads, you will really have good fuel economy coming in. For the last 3-4 days, the display is still on. We have got over 34 kmp left of the display on the CV in spite of pushing it as well. So yeah, a higher fuel economy combined with a larger tank capacity as compared to the Imperiale will give it a longer riding range as well. Now in terms of dynamics, although this is heavier by 24 kgs, the moment you start moving, actually you feel surprised the bike tends to shed its weight it becomes very nimble it becomes very flickable in traffic however you ride the cv after this one and for tight turns especially when you are in a traffic and you want to change lanes at a red light this one will feel better it just has a very tighter turning radius as compared to the benelli offering over here in terms of your ride quality well there is one thing i didn't like with the benelli that was the seat it is really very hard as compared to the honda offering over here However, trust me, the moment I hit bad roads, the suspensions, USP came out. It really glides over undulations and bad roads. The CV is not bad, but this one just feels slightly better over broken roads, over bad roads. On the CV's plus point, the seat definitely is more livable. It's on the softer side. So if you are going to invest into a Benelli, I urge you to work on the seat. And then the seat and the suspension combination will really, really make a world of difference to your riding on Sunday morning rides like this one. Now, in terms of a riding stance on the CV first, it is really a, a more comfortable option over this one, at least for my posture, for my height. When you sit on the bike, the handlebars are slightly over as compared to that one. And the gap between the rider, your shoulders and the handlebars is almost perfect. On this one, you seem to be seated slightly more closer towards the uh, instrumentation. And of course, it's a split seat, so you know that your bum is going to hit the second seat. So you tend to sit over here and it feels more compact, which could be of plus point to shorter riders. But that one for someone who's tall and hefty like me will definitely prefer the CB over the Imperiale in that matter. Also in traffic, back to the Benelli, the foot pegs, the rider foot pegs are really stretched out. So that is an issue in traffic because you have to keep your legs wide open. It's not a good term, sorry, but you have to keep your legs wide open. So that is a hindrance. But on the other hand, this is narrower on the lower side. So managing the CV in traffic where you have to put your feet on the, on the road or one foot on the road, this is more manageable as compared to the offering, uh, Benelli offering over here. Uh, braking, both the motorcycles get you ABS, but again, high speed manners are something where Honda bikes are known for. And in this one as well, I think this one has an upper hand as compared to the Imperiale for high speed braking. Uh, one more piece of mind factor in the CV has to be the alloy wheels because you have alloy wheels over here, you have tubeless tires, but in the Benelli offering, there are spoke wheels, so there are no tubeless tire. However, if you want to go for some small trail riding or your Himalayan trips or your trips to the Aravlis or down south into the hills of Karnataka and you have bad patches, the spoke wheels are easily repairable as compared to alloy wheels. But yes, I think overall in today's era, we do need tubeless tires and the CV offering gives you that. On the Benelli, well, you have a jackknife key over here and uh, you have a twin pod instrumentation console as compared to a single pod on the CV. Uh, unlike the CV, you have a tachometer on the Benelli, so that it will be preferred by a lot of people. You also have an adjustable brake lever for the front brake uh, over here, which is not present on the CV. So yes, uh, a twin pod instrumentation does convey you an old school charm, but that one has more technology, it has more features, it has more rider info display starting from the Bluetooth connectivity. You do have a nap for the rider, by the way, this is the key for the Honda offering. And on the right side, you have your Bluetooth connection and there's a small display over here, which gives you more information like your average fuel economy, which is missing on the Benelli offering. On the Benelli offering, you only have an odometer, you have trip meters, you have a fuel level indicator and a gear indicator, but this one has more information. Again, it goes down well with the overall feel of the bike. As I told you, it's a retro classic with modern elements, but that really is a old world charm, the Benelli offering. Moving on, yes, there is a lot of information on offer in this video. Moving on, getting the Benelli onto its main stand is an easier affair as compared to CV because you have this lovely grab wheel on either side of the bike. So you 
use the grab rail and get the umbrella onto the main stand much easier than the CB in which you have to use this thing as compared to the holder on the Brelli. So yeah, getting the lighter CB feels more tougher as compared to getting the heavier Impreale on its main stand. It's much more easier. This by the way also has a helmet lock provision on the left side of the body panels. Now both the bikes also have the option to put on all the four indicators. Very useful when you're riding in foggy conditions or you have stopped by the side of the road. You can indicate other people that your bike is stopped. So the indicators, hazard switch are there on both the motorcycle. On the deluxe version of the CB, you also have a better honk. It's really loud. I don't recommend honking, but just in case you need to make sure truckers give you way, this one has a better horn as compared to that on the Benelli. Again, it goes down with its kind of styling, you know, be it the twin port instrumentation, be it the extra chrome around the indicators or the riding poster or the horn. Everything seems to gel in well with the look of the motorcycle. If you're still watching the video, I'm very sure you have made your choice between the CB350 and the Imperiale 400 over here. So as I told you in the beginning, alternatives to a Royal Enfield 350, the Classic or the Meteor, both the bikes with either of the choices, you will definitely not go wrong over here. The Benelli, this is the most affordable Benelli on sale in India and really has a very good old world charm about it in the way it looks and of course the extra chrome on offering. On the other hand, this is Honda's latest baby, the CB350 and it manages to take forward the CB legacy in a very refined manner. Yes, once again, I think if you spend your money on the CB or the 400 over here, you will definitely not be going wrong. What is your pick among the bikes? Let us know in the comment section below, guys. And of course, we have more videos around both the motorcycles, the acceleration, the in-gear roll-ons, and of course, the sound of the bikes. The link to those are currently in the description section below. So after this video, I urge you to check out those videos as well. Thank you for watching.